hello everyone and welcome back to CCCS214 object oriented programming 2 uh, today we start our chapter on binary IO uh, so in the prerequisite course uh, object oriented programming 1 you have already used files before uh, but um, the, those files were what we call text files. Um, in this chapter, we start looking at uh, we look at another type of file in which information is encoded differently. Uh, and these files are called binary files. Uh, the main difference between text files and binary files is that when you open up a text file, uh, you can usually uh, use something like Notepad and uh, or even Word if you want and uh, but primarily just notepad and you can read the contents uh, of a text file. If you open up uh, the uh, whatever explorer uh, application you have on your system and uh, you look around your file system uh, you'll be able to find plenty of uh, uh, text files in your system. Uh, so, for example, over here I have opened my um, Windows OS folder and as you can see it contains plenty of files with the extension .log. Many of these log files, usually uh, they happen to be text files. So if I just pick this one over here, open it up and as you can see uh, the information in here may not mean much but um, uh, it's uh, very much human readable. I have uh, apparently some timestamps over here, more timestamps and some, uh, apparently some XML stream information. So this is what a text file uh, looks, typically looks like. So what we talk, what we'll look at today are uh, binary files and um, in uh, today's first programming examples will will we'll work with a very simple binary file and we'll open that up and see what we can see um, and the main advantage you may wonder why do we have these two types of files and uh, uh, the main benefit is that accessing a binary file is much more efficient processing binary files is much more efficient than working with text files um, another advantage is that if you uh, as you'll see, um, information encoded, uh, the way it is written to a binary file, takes up much less space than uh, when the same thing is done uh, in, a, in a text file format. Uh, so you've already dealt with file objects when you were working with uh, when you worked with text files before. Uh, the basic steps in uh, in the use of any kind of file are kind of uh, some uh, great uh, largely similar. Um, so over here, for example, um, in this example over here, if you want to read from a file, you can create a scanner object and pass to it uh, a file object, which, can, which you can also create in there. Um, and they can basically start reading uh, lines of text from the file. Uh, similarly, if you want to write to a file, uh, this is what we did before. Uh, you can create uh, a, a print writer uh, object, pass it a file, a file name over here, create a print writer object, and you can start printing or writing lines of, of strings uh, to, to that file. And when you're done, you just can just close close the file so it's kind of old stuff um, so I mentioned that uh, information written to a binary file is uh, much more compact uh, than when written to a, in, in, to a text file and I want to show you a quick example over here so um, let's say you want to write a number uh, let's say this decimal number 199 um, to a file. Okay, so if you write it to a text file, uh, it will write three characters 
uh, to that file, the character 1, the character 9, and another character 9. Uh, now, 199 is not a very big number. Uh, another way to encode it is uh, 199, uh, which in binary over here makes 11000111. And as you can see, that takes uh, only 8 bits. Uh, or you can, in hexadecimal format, you could represent this binary number as C7. Now, 8 bits are equal to 1 byte. So uh, if you just, if, 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 if your purpose is to store the number 199, you could do that in uh, as little as a byte, really. So you can see you can store the same kind of information and coding it uh, you know, by, uh, differently by using, by allocating the meaning of bits um, differently. Now, with regards to efficiency, uh, like I mentioned before, binary I.O. is uh, much more efficient uh, than uh, t text file I.O. And the reason is that uh, when you read or write uh, data from a text file, there's an extra uh, encoding and decoding step that uh, happens in, uh, uh, in, in the process of writing to a text file and reading from a text file. Uh, something that is uh, that 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 doesn't happen in binary files. In binary files, typically, as as we'll do today, when you write a byte to a file, uh, those bits uh, go to the file exactly uh, the same uh, the same way as they are in the byte variable that you're dealing with, working with in your program. Uh, but um, uh, uh, that is not necessarily, that is not the case for uh, text I.O. So, um, let's take a look at the, uh, the class hierarchy uh, related to binary I.O. Um, so, at the very top, we have Java's object class and uh, it has subclasses, uh, input stream and output stream that we are interested in today. Uh, you can you'll notice that input stream and output stream are both uh, typed in italic font, which means input stream and out output stream are both abstract classes. Um, input stream, uh, it's a, these are kind of symmetric, uh, as, as you'll see from here on out, uh, for the most part. So input stream has three subclasses, uh, 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 non-abstract, <laughs> concrete, subclasses file input stream, file, filter input stream, and object input stream. And filter input stream has these further two subclasses, data input stream and buffered input stream. Uh, similarly, on the output stream side, we have file output stream, which corresponds to file input stream. Filter input stream has a corresponding filter output stream class, and object output stream over here has a corresponding object input stream on on the other side. Uh, today, uh, we'll only look at file input stream and file output stream classes uh, to get used to the idea of uh, dealing with binary files. Um, so here's a UMN class diagram of the abstract input stream class and its methods. Uh, as you can see, there's only one abstract method over here, this read method. Uh, the other ones are concrete methods. Uh, so let me just walk you through what each of these methods uh, uh, does. So the read method basically reads the next byte, the next eight bits uh, from the file. It begins, of course, once you open a file, it starts from the beginning, uh, but after that, uh, with each, every time you call the read method uh, on an, uh, uh, every, every time you call the read method, uh, it, this method reads one, only one byte for you. And uh, the value of that byte that is read is returned to you as an integer. And uh, that, that integer will have a value between 0 and 255. Uh, if uh, you call the read method at a place when you're at the end of the file and there's nothing left to read, 
uh, it will return the value minus one. So you have to check uh, whenever you call the read method, you have to make sure that you haven't reached the end of the file. Uh, now, if this is too tedious, reading one byte at a time, uh, there's an alternative uh, that you can use the read method uh, and pass to it as an argument uh, a byte array, an array of bytes. And what that will do is it will basically fill up uh, the entire array that you pass over here with bytes read from the file. And this method also returns an integer. That integer tells you how many bytes were written into, into the array uh, that, that you provided. And this is important because uh, sometimes the array you provide, uh, you may, may have provided maybe very large, and there may not be enough bytes left in the file to read. So in that case, you have to check how many of the bytes in the array were actually written to it from the file and how many were left unused. Uh, there's another modification of the read method, another uh, an overloaded version of the read method, technically, uh, which uh, lets you specify the location in the byte array over here into which uh, data from the file should be read and placed. So you can, uh, as a second argument, you can provide an offset value, an integer, and a length value, also an integer. And what that'll do is it will start writing data into this uh, byte array B uh, in location B start B offset all the way to uh, B offset plus length for the third argument minus one and uh, this overloaded version of the read method also returns an integer telling you how many bytes were read and written uh, read from the file and written into this array. Uh, there's also an available method which tells you how many more bytes uh, are in, uh, uh, can be read from the input string, so basically tells you how many bytes are left in the file if you're reading from a file. That's a close method. After you're done uh, reading from a file, you should uh, close it. Um, as a skip method, which lets you hop over a certain as many number of bytes as you uh, specify in the argument. Uh, as a mark method, which is basically like a, like a bookmark, uh, you can call uh, the reset method. Uh, when you call, if you have marked or placed a mark someplace in your file, you call reset uh, the place at which you're currently in the file, the, the read pointer will jump back to that, uh, to the bookmark that you placed. Now, uh, not all input streams, not all files may support the use of, uh, 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 of the mark and reset methods. Uh, you can check that before using them by using the mark supported method and that will return a true or false Boolean value. Uh, the output stream is considerably this is considerably simpler class. The output stream uh, class is also abstract. I have a write method uh, in which you can provide uh, a single integer that will be uh, written as one byte into the file. Uh, you can also provide an entire uh, byte array which will write all the elements of that array into the file. Um, and uh, similarly to the read method in the input stream class, we have an overloaded version of this which you can provide an, a byte array uh, along with a starting offset position from where onwards uh, you want to write the contents into the file and a length argument. Uh, a close method to close the file uh, when you're done and a flush method. So uh, when you call the write method uh, on a file, sometimes the data, uh, the byte value, or the, the, uh, the bytes in the array, uh, they may not make it all the way to your, uh, to, 
to, to your disk uh, where, where you keep your file. Uh, they may be stuck in one of the caches that you have, may have, probably have in your computer. And to make sure that anything that you, for which you have called the right method is actually written to the file before you close it, before closing it, you should call the flush method. So, like I mentioned today, we'll look at uh, uh, two of these classes, two of these subclasses of the input stream and output stream uh, abstract classes. Uh, first one on the input side is file input stream, and on the output side is file output stream. <coughs> Uh, so, to create a file input stream object uh, uh, in the constructor, uh, you need to pass it as an argument either a string, which would be the name of a file, uh, can include an entire path to some place on your hard drive, uh, or you can create the file object first and then pass the file object to file input stream in the constructor again. Now, uh, when you uh, create a file input stream object uh, that might uh, throw an exception of type file not found exception and you may need to handle that so um, another thing uh, for output stream sometimes uh, so if you if you just call if you just create um, file output stream object uh, providing either a string for file name or a file object uh, as argument uh, and if this if a file of the same name already exists uh, what this will do is it will delete all the contents all the previous contents of that file uh, if you want to add information to an existing file you can do that too but for that you have to provide an additional second argument, boolean argument, uh, that specifies whether you want to append to that file, information to that file, means adding information to the file at the end uh, or not. And uh, if you want to do that, you should pass uh, the second argument over here should be true, that yes, you, you want to append the information. You don't want to lose the information already written to the file. So uh, let me now jump to test file stream class over here and let me describe uh, what we're doing. So this is a very simple test program. We have a main method and uh, uh, there are no other classes to this example. So in the first line, uh, we create a file output stream object called output. And uh, we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a binary file called temp dot dat dat is typically, typically an extension uh, short for data can, be, can really contain anything and uh, once we have that file output stream object I'm going to call output um, I have here a for loop that runs from 1 to 10 right and I'm going to write the counter variable I to that file so I'm going to write 10 bytes uh, each byte containing a number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and then when I'm done with the loop I close the file so I just call the close method on uh, the output object so that is the right phase uh, then to test if I can read the information back I'm going to create a file input stream object I'm going to call this object simply input and uh, remember I'm working on I'm, I'm reading from the same file so I'm provide, providing the same file name temp.dat so I'm, I'm opening the same file again for reading and create an integer variable called value and then have a while loop over here because uh, I may not always know how many uh, uh, how many bytes I have in the file 
and check what I'm doing over here. So the while loop runs as long as the contents of value, which I'm getting, which is the return value of the read method, as long as that is not equal to minus 1. Remember, uh, read returns a minus 1 when we have reached the end of a file. But as long as that is not the case, I'm just going to print out using system.out.print. I'm going to print out uh, the contents of variable value, and I'm going to put a space after that, just to make the out output more readable. Uh, I'm going to go through this loop until the end of the file. And when we're done, we're going to close. Uh, I'm going to close the, the file input stream. Okay, so let me run this. Not going to see much. Uh, actually, we are going to see something. So there you go. So we wrote a file. We read it back, and we printed out the values of, of, the, of all the bytes we found. And the values were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And just to show you that something actually happened over here, so this is uh, the place in my computer, the folder in my computer, where, uh, where I uh, created this test file stream uh, Java project. And here's the temp.dat file that this created. Let me just open this up for you and show you that this is not a text file. I cannot see the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 over here. Instead, I see these weird characters, and I could actually you can also use a different program, this one called Notepad++, which Uh, has a different way of displaying the contents, um, uh, a different way of displaying uh, binary files a little bit, so you can see that there are actually, actually some characters over here that okay. So just to show you that I didn't make this file beforehand or something, I'm going to delete this temp.dat file. I'm going to go back here, run this program again. Go back, and there you go, temp.dat file just created. Same thing. So this was just to show you that uh, this our program small program over here actually uh, created a new file in a folder where there was wasn't any before so this is uh, all about uh, file input stream and file output stream classes and uh, yeah so next time we'll move on to some of the we'll look at some of the other uh, subclasses of the input stream and output stream classes.